Welcome. I'm so glad we're able to worship together today. We are continuing our series on the Beatitudes. And today's Beatitude is, blessed are the persecuted. What does that mean for us who live in a country with freedom of religion? How does this apply to us? We're gonna talk about that today. And as we prepare to hear God's word and to worship the Lord, let's calm our hearts and our minds. Trinidad 
Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, we praise you for the freedom we enjoy to worship you and to talk about you to others. We pray for those in this world who do not have that freedom, who hide as they worship, who keep their faith under wraps for the safety of themselves and the safety of their families. Lord, give all persons everywhere the freedom of religion. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In March of 1998, the 13 year old daughter of an Egyptian family that had recently converted to Christianity was kidnapped, raped, and forced to change her religion by a terrorist group. The girl was released, but on returning home, the terrorists attacked her entire family, killing them by slitting their bellies and crushing their heads with stones. From the very beginning of the church, there are many accounts of Christians being tortured, mocked, and murdered. We are greatly blessed in our nation. Our religious freedom affords us the right to worship, to teach, and to speak aloud to others about our faith. Yet some of us claim that we are indeed persecuted. Some say we are persecuted because we cannot pray aloud in our public schools, or because people make fun of us for being holy rollers, or because our faith seems unimportant or disrespected by others. Now, all of these things do happen, but they can in no way be counted as true persecution. But there is, however, a means by which all Christians are persecuted. It's not by any person or group of people. It is the mockery and attempted persecution from Satan. The Greek word translated as um, persecution is dediomenio. It is not merely defined as to persecute, but it also means to pursue, to oppress, or to harass. And isn't this what Satan does to us? Isn't this what we're surrounded by? Isn't this what Satan, the deceiver, attempts to do within each of us? In this day and age, in this time and place, we don't hear much about the forces of evil. We don't talk about the devil and his schemes. We don't even mention evil around us because doing so, we would cause others to roll their eyes or dismiss us. Or perhaps we do not mention the evil forces of wickedness because we ourselves wonder if they exist. At your baptism, you or your parents and godparents vow to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world. We acknowledge these dark forces at 
every baptism. And Jesus acknowledged them in his teaching. When healing those overcome by spirits or when sending out the apostles to share the gospel, he told those he sent out, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all power of the enemy. Another place in the scripture is in the book of Ephesians. The church of Ephesus was given instruction on how they might fight against the forces of evil. It says, be strong in the Lord and mighty in his power. Put on your full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And as in addition to all of this, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of evil. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Evil forces are present in the world. Maybe they look like temptation. Maybe they look like the sins you want to give up but cannot resist. Maybe they do look like violence or abuse or terrorism. Now, whatever form they may take in our lives, we have been given the armor needed to stand strong in their presence. See, God has indeed given us a full panoply of armor to stand strong in our truth. Put on this armor, God says, suit up. Suit up, put on the belt of truth. How can we stand strong when we are persecuted by evil? Remember that with the gospel of Jesus Christ, we carry the truth. Jesus said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now when Satan tries to tell us lies about ourselves or about others, we must put on the belt of truth. You're not good enough, Satan says. Suit up. The truth is that you are a beloved child of God. You are beyond help, Satan says. Suit up. The truth is that with God there is forgiveness and love. Put on the belt of truth, brothers and sisters, and it will equip you to stand strong against evil that persecutes us. The next bit of gear we are charged with donning is the breastplate of righteousness or justice. Now, the breastplate protects a soldier's heart, his vital organs, his life, and breath. Now, the words justice and righteousness are kind of churchy words. They are hard to understand when applying that to everyday life. So how then can they protect our hearts, this breastplate of righteousness and justifying? It's hard to know when we don't understand. Think of a typewriter and justifying the margins, making them straight. Righteousness and justice make us straight and right with God. Through Christ, God has justified us, made us right with God. 
Now, as humans, our spirits are often askew, jumbled, mixed up, out of whack. Suit up. Put on the breastplate of justice and righteousness. Recognize that God is bigger than this world. And God alone can bring us righteousness or rightness. Brothers and sisters, how are we going to stand strong if we are not fully protected? Football players wear cleats to help them keep traction and to prevent them from slipping. The next thing Ephesians asks us to do is to fit our feet with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Satan can knock us down. Suit up. The gospel of peace keep up, keeps us on our feet. And guess what? The world needs to know the gospel. So suit up. Fit your feet with the gospel. Jesus Christ came to earth. God with us, Emmanuel. He lived and died and rose again, and he did this for you, for me, for all people around the world. So get your shoes on, y'all, and get to running. Bring the gospel with you wherever you go and share it. By doing so, you will silence the one who persecutes you. Next, we take on the shield of of faith. I want to tell you something about the shields used by the Roman soldiers. They weren't little. They were they weren't round, but these shields were big rectangles, about two feet wide and four feet tall. These shields were big enough to protect their entire body. And when those soldiers stood side by side, these shields could protect the entire body army. Suit up. Carry that shield of faith. Satan throws flaming arrows our way. Arrows of doubt, pain, anger, hatred, you name it. The arrows come flying. Suit up. Let your faith in Jesus Christ who keeps you strong help protect you against Satan's persecution. And when the sky is dark and for all of the arrows flying, suit up. Stand next to your brothers and sisters who are also armed with the shield of faith. And that will make you strong. Hey all, I must confess, and many of you know, I have a hard head. I am stubborn. I fight to be independent, ask my parents, ask my family. I've been that way from day one. Maybe you can identify that. But even as hard-headed as we may be, we still need to protect our heads by wearing the helmet of salvation. One strike, one blow to the head can end your life. Our clay vessels are fragile at times. We grow old, we get sick, our bodies break down. Suit up, put on the helmet of salvation because even when our bodies give way, even we are, when we are struck on the head, we will be able to live. We will be brought to eternal life with God and all of the saints in heaven. Did you hear that last part? When we are persecuted by Satan to the point that we are worn out, persecuted, hit down, thrown down, our armor in faith, our helmet in faith brings us to eternal life. In other words, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
no matter what violence or pain, what illness or attack comes upon us, suit up. The helmet of salvation, the armor of God brings us to eternal life through Christ Jesus. Because without Jesus, there is no belt of truth. Without Jesus, there is no shield of justice and righteousness. Without Jesus, there is no good news, no gospel to carry to the world. Without Jesus, there is nothing to which we have faith. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Without Jesus, there is no protection against the persecution of Satan. We experience persecution in the form of a spiritual battle. Yet, we do know that there are millions of people around the world today who are in danger and persecuted for their faith. The scripture we have been looking at in Ephesians, in Ephesians ends by saying, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Now, when we pray for others, it often leads to a calling from God and the strength and conviction to follow that calling. As we pray for those who are persecuted for faith, for justice and righteousness, for rightness with God, how is God calling us to help those around the world who are indeed being persecuted. Suit up, church. We have work to do, and God has provided the equipment we need. We can fight our own persecution, and we can fight on behalf of others who are facing physical persecution. As we do all of these things, as we stand strong in our faith, we will be shown the kingdom of heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. We have work to do, so suit up and fight. And all of God's fighting children said, Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea My 
place in all oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall be sent. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.